welcome back to our webinar on immigration. And if you aren't familiar with Youth Celebrate Diversity, it is dedicated to educating and empowering youth in order to advance inclusion and equity for all. We believe that education is a fundamental human right and one of the critical tools every person needs to succeed in life. We believe that change would come from within a community and not from outside forces. We are working toward a more just and equitable community that values every human being, and we believe in the young people who would lead us to this vision. And let's, I think we're going to start off with introducing our hosts and myself. I'm Raima Kumar. I'm a senior at Cherry Creek High School in Colorado, and I immigrated here when I was 10 years old from India, and I have moved I've lived in three different states. I've moved around four times in my life so far. And yeah, so Angel, is that how you say it? Yes, Angel. Uh, Angel, please introduce yourself. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Angel Signs, and I am currently studying at Front Range Community College in Colorado. And I immigrated to the United States from Mexico when I was barely just three years old. That's very cool, Angel. Um, please share your like migration story. What were your parents' expectations and hopes for coming here? Well, certainly. Uh, my immigration story is kind of like it's what you call the American dream. You know, they they wanted to make it big, and so they left their old lives and came to the United States, uh, via plane. You know, they came here with a travel visa. You know, and they never went back. So. My dad's been doing odd jobs, you know, to support my family. You know, he's been able to climb the ranks now, now that I'm a lot older. But back then, he couldn't do a lot of things. And my mom also had a lot of hopes and dreams when coming to the United States. And we're slowly but surely making that our goal. Okay, yeah. I have a very similar story as well. Um, that's very that's very empowering, Angel. And my immigration story is very similar. My mom wanted to do her PhD as she was already a psychologist in India and wanted to continue her studies and decided to do her PhD in Michigan. And she took me and my sister with her. And my dad still lives in India, so we moved here so to Michigan, first time ever to a new country at, when I was 10 years old, and I had to start going to school in Upper Peninsula, Michigan. And if you are unfamiliar with the UP, it's very, very predominantly white, and that was a huge change from growing up in India. So, yeah. And what? why did you or your parents choose to come to the United States over another country? I think the main, I think I kind of said mm -hmm. it, but, you know, the yeah, so-called like, American dream, yeah, it's like yeah. everyone has the, that hope and dream of just making it big, you know, mm -hmm. earning a lot of money, you know, and sharing a bit of wealth to your family because my family isn't, you know, super rich down in Mexico, but they're mm -hmm. like barely, you know, passing by. So my parents, you know, they want to give back. Mm -hmm. Talking about your community in Mexico, who did you leave behind? And is it like all your family or just some? I think it's a lot of my family. Uh, Usually just like distant relatives, aunts, uncles, you know, my mom, you know, she was raised by her aunts and, you know, it was very hard for her coming to Colorado and not seeing any of her family around. You know, my dad has it a little more, like, relaxed because after he left, a bunch of his brothers left, and he has, like, a very big family. So sometimes we, like, see each other at, like, gatherings or dinners or stuff like that, and we all share, like, the same goal and dream. Yeah, that's very, very thoughtful and really nice to hear. And what do you think, I know you immigrated here super young, but if you remember anything, what do you think surprised you the most from like, from Mexico versus the United States? Looking back at old, old photos, I just, it seemed more like barren. And over here, it seems more like 
colorful and you know mm -hmm. more there's just like a mix of like a little bit of this a little bit of that and that's mostly all I can remember and mm -hmm. you know hearing stories that my parents used to tell me of what I used to do back in our little ranch down mm -hmm. there yeah, that's really nice. I actually experienced the same thing. It's very, I feel like it's such a shock that you almost like don't like register it because it's like so such a different experience because I went to school in India and compared like the schooling is probably extremely like both like bipolar on like either sides. It's very, very different. Um, <clears throat> and I feel like a lot of people were really surprised that I could speak English when I came here, even though it was like, like I went to an English medium school like I spoke English my entire life and that's something that really like surprised me was that people would try to like ask me if I spoke English and I would be like yeah and they, they would be super surprised because I was coming from like India which is like known to be like a more poor country and that really definitely was a shock and kind of like that was like the first impression I had of my own country but like another like people like another person's lens when I came here and I felt that was very like interesting and I almost felt like I needed to prove to people that like no it's not like that almost if you know what I mean and what have Angel what have been your greatest sources of joy would you say in your recent years I think just making it into college you know like I took a bunch of opportunities I might have like entered some like more advanced classes like later on but I needed that little push you know to get me where I am right now and safe to say that it's mostly just because of my parents you know they they believed in me they wanted a better life for me you know now that we're a little more what's the word more comfortable around you know the whole country the if that makes sense, like we're more accustomed <laughs> to like American ideals, if you will. Yes, yes, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, I have been able to, you know, I speak pretty much fluent English, you know, because they've pushed me to, you know, they, they didn't want me to be discriminated. They didn't want me to also like leave my culture out. So they've also like been teaching me Spanish too. So I, I'm a proud bilingual because of them yeah that I do I owe it to my mom and my dad for making me the person I am I think if they if like education wasn't such like an enforced topic in the household I wouldn't value it as much and now I have such a high value for education itself and furthering my education and I feel like being an immigrant kind of makes it like more important because to make it here is to like is one like one of the only ways is to further your education and I think that we like as immigrants kind of value it more because we've seen the worst from our countries and we've seen like what happens like when people don't get the opportunities we do what do you think about that I mean I'm I'm not one to judge but I can surely say that that is very true because most people don't have the benefit of, you know, getting a good education or getting like a good talk from their parents or anything like that. And that's why you always hear like these so-called horror stories of mm -hmm. people going rogue, you know, and getting arrested. And that's why we get all these negative stereotypes out of yeah. nowhere. Exactly. But only because it might have been their first time. Maybe they're not even like immigrants. Maybe they're just like they're fully documented and they just take it for granted. Meanwhile, most of us have to like fight tooth and nail to get, you know, at least one civil right because we're all created equally, are we not? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I feel like we um, are grateful for like the smaller things in life when people are surprised to what we're grateful for. As you said, like even getting like one piece of documentation to yourself is like a huge deal for a lot of families across the country when it might not seem like a bigger deal to another like whole different side of the community. Overall, like how do you think your family is like, would you say they are like happy that they moved? Like they happy they moved from Mexico? Oh, totally. Like 
I mean, yeah, they, they get homesick from t time to time, but, you know, uh, we've grown so much that we've helped, you know, relatives come visit us and, you know, they get the nicer side of things because we've worked and we've shared and, you know, for my family, at least, we're like very close when it comes to like sharing personal things. So, you know. It's like what we say, you know, mi casa, su casa. That's very, very literal when it comes to us. Yes, I agree. I would say that it's very similar in my family, too. It's like very, I feel like it's almost like second nature to provide, feel the need to like provide for your extended family and be there for them. And even if it's like the smallest ways, like every time we go back to India, we would like we would pack so much just to like give to people because I think it's a part of it is the fact that like we kind of made like we left and we kind of made it versus like, and then going back and then like pro being able to like provide and being able to like honestly shower your family with gifts it's like a gift in itself and in what ways do you think um, migrating here has made you a stronger person I think it's made me like more aware of what I am, to be honest. I know what I am and I'm very proud of it. Like I, I knew that I could have struggled, but I didn't let myself struggle. I pushed myself. I've, you know, I've made the, I made the cut to be in college. So I, I know that I've made it far and, you know, and especially what I want to do, I've always been like a passion of, you know, I've always had a passion of arts. So like getting somewhere, being able to express myself and who I am makes it like even better. It kind of swings the deal for me. That's very, very true. I relate to that as well. I feel like because I immigrated, I'm like very, very sure about my like identity and even though I've like questioned it many times over the years, something about me that I've always like been proud of is the fact that I'm Indian. And I think I'll always kind of be proud of that because I've like seen, like I've had like both, I've kind of lived both lives in a way where I've like lived a like basically a life in India versus a life in the US. And I honestly think I, I love that I have both experiences because it's like not very common and I think it makes me who I am is the fact that like it's a part of my identity and yeah so what do you think you like have you ever felt unwelcome as an immigrant and like how have you like um ex like faced that struggle and how have you dealt with it in my personal experience I have never been discriminated I've I felt welcomed everywhere but that doesn't change the fact that it does happen from time to time. If I let my true colors show, then usually, usually when with like close friends that are also like of my social status or like around that, we usually joke with each other, but that's about it. But for like people usually never think of me as undocumented. And sometimes they like turn their head when I speak Spanish to them, like fluent Spanish. Because they always like, I mean, this this doesn't give away anything. They always like assume, you know, the best. They they see me like excel and they just assume. I know I said that, but they have high expectations of me, which is like a blessing and a curse because it shows that I'm, yeah, I'm succeeding. But it also shows that some, sometimes people can not be ignorant, but just not be aware and I want them to be aware of that. So to make a to make it short, I, I don't think I've never been discriminated, but I have seen it happen and I have stood up for people and I will always stand up for people. Yeah, that's really nice to hear that you had like such a good experience from immigrating. And since you like migrated super young, like when did you realize that you like moved here and like how did that like make you feel? I think I've always just like had this expectation of like everyone's super nice to me. Nothing could like change, you know, I didn't necessarily wake up. I mostly just was told what I was. 
I remember I asked my parents like super young, it's like, what's an immigrant? Because we were talking about immigration in school back when, you know, the dreamers first started appearing. And I was interested because I loved watching the news because my parents always got like excited every time we heard like good news. So when I asked the age old question, what is an immigrant? They said, I'm an immigrant. I was, I was just a little shocked, confused. I was like, what? No, it can't be, you know. But then I thought about it every time I wanted, you know, I was I was a very curious kid. I was like, I want to go to this country and I want to go to that country. And they're like, oh, well, we can't. And, you know, they, they'd always make the same old excuse. Oh, we don't have any enough money. And then they finally broke it to me you know, you can't leave because if you do leave, you won't be able to come back. And, you know, the kids going, why, why, why? And then they just folded it in a nice, neat little pile saying, you can't go back because you weren't born here. And it was a culture shock for me because I just, because I knew that I, you know, was born in Mexico, but I didn't think it'd be rough, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't realize, like, the impact it'll actually have in your life now. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Actually, yeah, me too. Because even though, like, I was, like, fully aware, obviously, and because I moved here pretty, like, when I was 10, um, it's just, like, weird when you don't get to have the opportunities, like, the same opportunities as the like, kids around you, and then you are, like, questioning it because it's, like, what makes me different from them? And it's just because of, like, a small thing that you just, like, didn't happen to be born in this country and that, like derives you of like a lot of things and realizing that definitely is a, a culture shock for sure because you are you feel kind of like on the outside a little bit or like in the outskirts of things because it's like at the end of the day you weren't born here so you don't have the same opportunities as people who were and what do you think have like I know you said that you've had a really good experience with migrating and everything but what would you say has like been like your biggest challenges in your life biggest challenges i can name like a bunch but i don't let them bother me like not anymore at least because i don't find loopholes i'm more or less like not cope but i find a, a way i find a way to strive like i'm very guilty of you know not getting things my way and as a coping mechanism, I guess, I always, like, I never give up. Like, I want to know. Like, for example, like, getting a driver's license. That was pretty hard because I didn't know how to. My parents, you know, they taught me everything, but we were late on a lot of stuff. We were late on DACA. We were late on teaching me how to drive. But now I just figured out that Colorado, you know, has a law of letting me drive. I just needed a marked license. So I went through the struggle of learning how to drive and here I am, I learned. And also something that was pretty hard was getting a job because no, no social security. Mm -hmm. So how do I compensate? I, you know, just chores, you know, or ask someone if they need, you know, their lawn mode, you know, just simple things like that. Or, Paid internships, that's a big one for me. I always love doing paid internships because I help out my community and two, I get paid. You know, I, I have that real world experience that I can use. Yeah, and what would you say, like you, where did you, where did you find strength in like these difficult times when you were like not given the opportunities because you weren't born here? I feel like most of them don't bother me as much because as much as I cannot take no for an answer, I really do, you know, find comfort in just knowing that I'm here. Might as well just find another way. And also my family, you know, they, they, they always know how to, you know, find ways to make it work. That's really nice to hear. And talking about your family, how do you have any siblings? I do. I have two and they were also born and they were born here. Oh, that's really nice. And do you think that your experience growing up was different from theirs in any way? 
kind of i yeah i'm the oldest so like i have to be the example you know i have to be the oldest sibling i have to teach them right from wrong the stuff like that but you know when they get opportunities to travel you know they they can take it because now we have like the money and now they have you know papers and the the middle child she's like she's already gonna She's already working, you know, she's already learning how to drive a car, you know, she's just like in those little baby steps. So she doesn't have to suffer. But I did. And I'm okay with that. Because it goes to show that I, it's the very, very cheesy saying, you know, the st sticks and stones can't break my bones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm protecting her from that. Yeah. Even though... Yeah, that's very relatable. I have an older sister and we have a huge age gap. She's seven years older than me. And I would say that she would probably have like the same response as you did, is that she came here when she was 17. So she started college here and her experience was obviously very different from mine. And she always like was there for me and like definitely helped me through living in a super like predominantly white area because I always had her in a way as like my support system. And I really... I'm very grateful for that. And speaking of your family, how did your parents like like um deal with moving and how did they like how was their experience like? They started super small, like a trailer out in Fort Morgan small. Wow. So, you know, not really anything they could do. My dad had to take odd jobs, like I said. He did construction for like plenty of years and out of those years he's gained experience you know he's been teaching me you know how to how to help people how to take care of my siblings excuse me but just ex overall just show people that I can be better uh, that I'm not a stereotype that I can you know one day they'll need me that makes sense mm -hmm. and how did it feel like when your like dad was there for you like did it like help you through life and how would you say that you are like different now because you had that support from your parents it was very empowering I if I ever had a problem he'd always like find one way to like solve it that's probably where I got my I'll take no, I will never take no for an answer type of mentality came from because he, nev he never gave up. He always found a way to prevail. Like that's why we're in our third home. You know, we went from a small, you know, little trailer to a very decent home that in retrospect um, gained a lot of property value just because you know, we remodeled it and we've had the time and materials to, you know, fix ourselves so we don't live in like a rundown shack anymore. We live in a very nice house now because of our hard work. Yeah, and I can totally relate. Um, When we moved here, we were living in apartments in Michigan. It was like meant for students because my mom was technically a student. And from that to um, moving to Colorado and buying our house, which is like brand new, it's a brand new house, just feels so empowering because it's like we did that, like we made it. And in that, like it was like seven years later and it definitely helps me and makes me value what we have now more because I know what it like, what it was like life was like when I didn't have it. And that definitely adds to my identity that I'm so much more grateful for the things I have now is because I know what it was like when we couldn't afford it or we didn't have it. And since like my mom went from being a student to a faculty in CU Denver, she's in the faculty in the medical school. And it's just so empowering to watch that she did it too. And that we went from like just moving here, not knowing anything about the country and then like having to figure everything out and everything was like a lesson to now like, definitely just like making our mark and knowing like and having a community and I feel like that's what um 
is very special about here is that you find your own people and that was my leading to my next question did you find a lot of comfort comfort in your community or just like who would did you like rely a lot on growing up I did I had a lot of friends you know like luckily for me I found comfort in knowing that there was a bunch of Hispanic kids in my old elementary school so I always grew up you know like semi speaking Spanish around them because you know we all we all were bilingual so we'd you know casually never forget our original language and also you know we'd speak English too but you know we we just found comfort in knowing that you're just like me I'm just like you and that's how I still have like one of my best friends around just because he stuck out for me anytime you know I had troubles with anything really because I think I was I wasn't really shut in but due to you know not having a lot of experience in the country I'd sometimes wonder what a certain word is while I was still learning yeah that's very real and I actually have finally like had that I never had like any Indian friends growing up because I was in Michigan and then I moved to Connecticut when I was a freshman in high school um so like three years ago and I did have some Indian friends but I never had like a community till I moved to Colorado and I remember being so sad when I found out that I had to move once again and I was so upset but now like a year and uh almost yeah a year and three months later I'm the happiest I've ever been I love this state and I finally have like brown friends and I've never like had that before where it's like a community and like I know a lot of like brown people and like we go to like events together and I've never had like friends to like celebrate my culture with before till now and it's like very special and I like it's just very nice to have and to like celebrate your country your culture with the people from like the same place and it's just really, really nice. And I would say, like, I definitely, like, find comfort in that even now, even though, like, I don't face, like, any racism anymore or anything. It's definitely, like, a super comforting feeling. I agree with you. And how would you say your family is doing, like, currently, like, recently, like, all, like, your siblings and your parents, like, how do they feel? We're happy, you know, like, we're one step closer to that American dream. And we're just trying to live out the best of our days since I'm going to be like, you know, I might transfer to a four year college and then I'll finally have, you know, an opportunity to do what my parents are doing for their parents and their relatives. I'll be able to do the same. Hopefully I'll have a nice job, you know, getting a first getting an associates, then maybe getting like a bachelor's so I can excel even further. Yeah, same. So when I graduate next year, I plan on to go to a four-year college and also get my MBA. And I think that I want to be like my mom when she came here is that I want to be able to provide for my family and even provide for my mom if I like, f like if I can, because she's been there for me my entire life. And also just like the feeling of knowing that like you achieved what your parents wanted you to achieve or like came here for you to like have, it's just very like fulfilling. How would you, like, would you say that you feel the same? Yeah, I, I would say that I feel the same. It's very fulfilling, very, I'm proud of what we've achieved. Yeah, I would say too. And since we have a couple more minutes left, I was like our last question could be what do you wish other people other young people knew about immigrants and immigration I just want them to empathize with them just imagine a scenario N nothing stereotypical just put yourself in your shoes just have basic empathy that's all that I ask and I maybe don't assume I 100% agree I feel like I think young people, I would hope and wish that our generation kind of goes into this topic with an open mind rather than like the stereotypes created like throughout the years and just kind of like 
just be kind because you never know what someone's going through. And I just think that having like, don't assume is like very, very real because you think like, you can't because everyone has a different story. And yeah. So do you think that like, what's one, like, if you could like advice a young person in our generation, like a regular person, like what would you like tell them? Like only one thing, like the most important. Be accepting. Be accepting. I and agree. Uh, if I can add on to that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So what I've, you know, all over the news recently, you know, with New York and Florida and the border right now, I can see that a lot of people are up are upset but our generation is more accepting nowadays i remember back in what 2010s around you know mid 2010s we'd have all these like yeah like stereotypes and every time we've talked about refugees or asylum you know we would always have like this you know post 9 11 mindset that oh they're here you know steal our jobs but they don't know the full story and i wish people knew that there's like something deeper other than just politics and stuff like that there's something deeper because everything that like every minute thing that everyone does like job wise helps this country grow and i love seeing this country grow because you have you know the great melting pot you bring all these cultures together and we all work very well. So I agree. I, I agree so much. And I think speaking of what you said, it reminded me of a quote from a book from an Iranian immigrant that she said, immigrants are the biggest, greatest patriots of this country because they're the most grateful to be here. And I think that really resonates with what we're talking about because we're the ones coming here for more opportunity and we know the difference of like not having any versus like the melting pot of America and like everything it has to offer. And I definitely do think um, America has moved on from that post 9-11 like mindset about like um, POCs because um, it's definitely more and more accepting. And I remember when I remember brown people were told to like go back to their country like because of like all like the terrorists and the bombings and I'm so glad that that mindset is kind of like we're moving away from that and it's becoming more and more accepting yeah and our generation is also becoming more accepting like I said which is very nice because I don't get you know accused anymore of being you know this or that every time I walk by they just treat me like I want to be treated you know just not as an equal because I mean everyone wants to be, but more or less just someone that's there that's willing to help you. Yes, they look past the racial and just look at you as a person, like every other person. And I think that's very like valuable. And I hope we continue to move to that as we our generation grows up. God willing. <laughs> And I think we can wrap our webinar up. And so thank you so much, Angel, for joining me. For no, this thank discussion. you. And I'm so glad we got to talk about so many different topics and we discussed a lot. And I hope our viewers really enjoyed hearing about it. And I hope you learned one new thing today. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, of course. And have a good day. And again, thank you so much for joining me for this webinar.